we are in the future this is the second part of my power bi jargon video in the first part we covered some of the power bi terminology and technology in this video let's uncover the remaining bits of power bi and understand what they mean in plain english oh i also have a special note for you as part of the preparation for this video i created all of these mind maps and i thought it would be awesome to digitize all of these so i have created a pdf with all of these mind maps as well as a quick glossary of the important terminology you can download that pdf for free using the link that shows up on the screen or in the video description so go ahead and grab that and use it to improve your understanding of power bi now let's jump into the second part of this iceberg and uncover the rest holy iceberg the third main area of power bi is the platform this is the online part of power bi where once you create the report and you publish it this is where other users will see and interact and this is where lots of jargon and new words appear all the time so many people get confused here so let's go ahead and see this in the case of our awesome chocolates example let's say you are the analyst the stick man here and you created a report in power bi and for this you got your data from uh, your crm system uh, another data from the shipment sy system collected this data in power query you calculated things and you built this report once this report is done you're not writing this report or creating this so you could read it you are making this so that your ceo cxo cfo and managers can see this so you publish this into a cloud system called power bi service or platform and you publish this there when you publish it it will create an online version of that report that can be seen by all of these other individuals based on the permissions that you set so if you say this can be seen by only these three people then this person cannot see or if you say this can be seen by everybody then all of them can see it so that's where the service aspect comes in so one way of thinking about this is there is a producer which is usually the case for most of us we are the ones that are producing stuff and then there is a consumer who are the ones that are reading and consumers are the ones that mostly interact with the service but also there are some things that you need to do in the service as well so let me explain some of the key jargon or terms the first one being service or platform this is nothing but the online aspect of power bi usually it is the powerbi.com or whatever that website is where you will do that a newer word that microsoft is now using is called fabric this is kind of like a much more capable and more integrated solution for the power bi offerings so apart from power bi and power bi service there are many other things that you need to worry about in the organization and all of those are kind of integrated into one offering called fabric what fabric does is it helps you streamline all the data aspects all the security aspects all the various individual systems that use data so that could be power bi it could be sql it could be python it could be some machine learning platforms whatever everything is deeply integrated in one place so that you don't have to maintain the data one data sets for power bi one for machine learning one for some streaming aspects and all of that so that's what fabric is i've got another video that explains what fabric is in plain english words do check that out if you want to know more about that then the next thing that you might hear is rls or row level security what this does is let's say you have created this report and now you have see, given this to all these four people through the service while they are reading you don't want the for example these are line managers for various product categories so you have got one person that is responsible for chocolate bars one person that is responsible for cookies and one person for something else you don't want the chocolate bars managers to know what is happening in the cookie business likewise you don't want this guy to know what is happening elsewhere so that is where row level security comes in you can set up a security protocol and rules that say that this person can only see this kind of data this person can only see this kind of data then what happens is same report 
will appear differently for each of them. If you think carefully, what RLS or row level security is doing is behind scenes, it is adding another layer of filtering or slicing. Then another word that you hear is sharing, publishing. This is when whatever you have created, you are publishing. So that means you're pushing it to the service. And then if you're sharing, you're basically giving others in the organization access to it. And then another aspect that we hear is workspaces. Workspaces are technically like folders where all your reports are organized. Usually in a typical organization, there might be hundreds of reports. And if you just list all of them in one place, then it gets tedious. So you maintain workspaces, one for finance reports, one for HR reports, one for sales dashboards like that. And then inside you put stuff. Likewise, it's not just one person making stuff. It could be 10 different people split into three data teams across the organization. So you might have workspaces for team A, team B like that. Think of them like similar stuff that you hear in SharePoint or network drives, etc. Then you have got scheduled refresh as well as refresh. What these words mean is if you have got a report and you're publishing it, let's say you've got new customer data and new shipment data. You don't need to manually update this. You can set up a scheduled process that pulls in the new data updates the report and updates the thing here. So all of these people are seeing up to date information. So that's called schedule refresh. Uh, you can schedule it to run once a week or something like that. You can also manually refresh. So if I'm doing manual refresh, then it is just refresh. Users, users are the people who are using the service. So it is you as well as all of these people. And then you have got plans. What kind of plan that you have for Power BI? Power BI is a paid service. Uh, there is free version just you could use on your own computer, but essentially if you're using it like this, you have to pay. So then there are different kinds of plans. Uh, mainly you have got pro and then you have got premium yeah, and then further uh, variations of premium are there. And if you are also using fabric, then yeah, it kind of gets integrated into that and you've got separate things that, that will be there as a plan. So those are the main technical concepts and jargon in the platform side of Power BI. And with this, we have covered a majority of the things. So we have covered the data, platform and reporting. Everything else is really simple stuff. I'm going to quickly go through them as well. Let's start our concepts with the general data stuff. Apart from all the data stuff that you have already heard, there are many other data concepts and jargon that you need to know in the inside Power BI and I've categorized them into this general area. One is data engineering. This is where rather than just connect to a data set and bring the data, you will set up a defined process that goes to various data places, connect, collects them, transforms them in an ordered and organized manner, and then pushes them downstream. So all of this process is called data engineering. There is a sub word that we use within this called ETL that is extract the data, transform the data and load the data. Now Power BI offers a solution called data flows, which is nothing but an ETL process wherein you are extracting the data, you are applying Power Query steps on top of the data and then you are loading that data so that the data is available for anybody to either directly analyze or build Power BI reports or use it as part of solutions. You might also hear a word called pipelines. I know that looks fun, but not those kind of pipelines. Pipelines is nothing but the stuff that is happening inside data engineering. So for example, you might have a pipeline from your CRM system to your sales dashboards. So the process of taking the CRM data and then doing something, something on top of it and moving it there so the dashboard can happen. This thing is nothing but a pipeline. Even though this sounds like a technical thing, essentially, if you are just connecting to an Excel file and removing few columns and splitting the first name in Power Query, you are doing a pipeline, but you just don't call it. You just call it as Power Query. Whereas if you're doing it against large systems and lots of data and all of that, then this fancy word is used. You might also hear another word called real time data or streaming data. What this means is you are connecting to data as it is happening. 
So for example, if you want to create a live chocolate shipment dashboard that just updates as and when we ship another box of chocolates, you might connect to a real-time data source. Uh, this data source is capable of streaming the data. That means as it happens, it will push new data out into the either data flow or pipeline. And then that pipeline will update and then finally you'll have output here. The next word is notebooks. These are where some of your code might stay that does some of the processing either for data engineering or even data science or other things. So notebooks is a fancy word for code basically. And within this code itself, you might have R, Python or other kinds of languages where the code might stay even SQL for example. Essentially, whatever you're writing, you would structure that into notebooks and the notebooks are then executed as part of either the ETL process or real-time process or something else. Let's go to the next one. And that brings us to the last main area of Power BI, the Power Tools, AI and Cloud related jargon. I put everything into one page so that we can cover everything in one go. The main Power Tools or Power platform ingredients that you come across within Power BI are Power Automate and Power Apps. Of course, there is also Power BI, but we have covered that earlier. What Power Automate does is it helps you build automation either at a desktop level or cloud or hybrid so that you can take some repetitive tasks and you can automate them. For example, in our chocolate company, Sometimes a customer emails us a PDF order form and we would like to take that order data, extract information from the PDF and automatically put it into our ordering system. So here we have got this stickman customer. He sends us a PDF to a secure inbox. So this comes in as an email to us. And as and when that email comes, we want to automatically read the contents of that PDF and put that into our database. We could hire some people to process the PDF, monitor the inbox and update data here, or you could build a Power Automate flow, wherein the flow is basically monitoring that inbox for any new emails. And as soon as that email comes and if it has the valid PDF attachment, it will run some steps so that the data is extracted and put in here. So that's where Power Automate comes in. And Power App is basically like a small app that you can build to do various things that you may want to do as part of your day-to-day -day business processes or even reporting. For example, rather than doing this PDF business, we could technically create a Power App, which is basically an app on the customer's phone. And then they can open that app and it will give them an order form there, wherein they can say, okay, I want six boxes of this chocolate, 17 boxes of that chocolate. And then they can submit, which will then come in and put the data here. So that is kind of like a Power App. Both of these Power Automate and Power Apps are what Microsoft calls as low code. That means uh, you don't really do a lot of coding. There's a little bit of coding involved, uh, but essentially you're just dragging and dropping and arranging things uh, to build forms or automations. So these are the two main ingredients of that Power Platform apart from Microsoft Power BI. Then comes the AI part and all of the AI offerings from Microsoft currently are under the brand of Copilot. Depending on where Copilot is, it can do different things. So for example, Copilot is part of the DAX query view. And here it can basically create measures for you or explain existing measures and business logic to you so you can understand what is going on. The same Copilot, when it is in at a report layer, it can create a whole report for you or make different graphs or explain things that are going on in your data. So for example, you might be looking at shipment trends and suddenly there is a big jump in shipments. You could ask Microsoft Power BI what is going on here and internally, well, technically Copilot is not used. It uses a different algorithms, but you know, they all kind of come into that AI offering there uh, where it can explain those things to you. So Copilot has different flavors and different variations and you will need to enable certain features at the service level 
so that it is available to the individual users who are working in Power BI. Apart from Copilot, there are also some other AI features that are baked into Power BI. Uh, one of my favorite is AI visuals. These are special kinds of visuals or graphs that use artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning algorithms to understand and explain your data better. For example, uh, there is a visual called Key Influencers. And what that does is it looks at an, a metric or information and then it understands what is influencing that. For example, in our chocolates business, I want to understand what is impacting our profit margin, the key metric that we track. So let's say we have got 37% profit margin. I want to understand what is impacting that. I could use key influencers to explore profit margin and I can say, look at this from the dimension of my product, team, or geography or something else like dates and then key influencers can tell you these things or these combinations of things are impacting your profitability. Another area of technologies or jargon that you come across are the cloud technologies. Again, this all depends on how you're implementing Power BI, what cloud platforms you're using. But the key players in this are Azure, which is basically Microsoft cloud offerings. Simultaneously, you could also have AWS, which is uh, Amazon's cloud offerings, or you could also have other providers. So for example, you might have uh, something like Snowflake. Don't confuse this with the Snowflake schema that we talked about. Snowflake is also the name of a company that offers cloud-based databases, warehouses and data lakes and stuff like that. So yeah, depending on how you're implementing, what your organization is using, you may have to uh, use or work with some of these different technologies. So there you go, that is the Power BI iceberg. You might just see the tip of it, but hopefully through this videos, you're able to understand all the underlying key players, all the jargon, technologies, and concepts. If you like a little bit more help in your Power BI journey, whether it is learning or implementation, do get in touch with me using my email address that is in the video description below. I would be very glad to help you out in your Power BI journey. Thank you so much for watching and if you have enjoyed this, give it a like and share it with a few friends. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.